Hey guys, welcome back. This is Dan here as always, and in this video I'm going to show you guys some of the project that I'm working on, as always. Um, and I got a few rolling stock uh, projects that I've been doing, and I got some locomotives uh, that I uh, recently kind of finished up here and uh, added the details to, which I'll show you guys in a second. Um, depending on how much this video goes, I might show the locomotives last, but hopefully we can kind of get through this pretty fast. But uh, anyways, like I said, I've been doing a couple of rolling stock projects and kind of going back to and adding... Um, some uh, safety stripes and doing a little bit of a touch up to a few older models uh, really kind of just trying to decide what I want to keep what I want to sell so I've been going through and actually selling quite a few of the older models that I don't really care much for anymore uh, selling those and kind of replacing them with some more modern rolling stock uh, that I actually want so anyways like I said the really the uh, shop project of going and adding all the uh, additional weathering and safety stripes to my uh, older car fleet has uh, gone pretty well and the first cars that I've been working on here are these two former Rock Island uh, coal hoppers and these you guys have seen before but I haven't shown these uh, recently because I've like I said been kinda going back and refurbishing basically what I did with both of these was I uh, touched up the paint a little bit and I kinda went more for a, a blotchy kind of patchy rust effect on these cars like the real ones have where it looks kinda more like this and you can see you have all the scratches and gouges in the sides of the car. And of course I added the safety stripes and you got the primer patches for them as well. And the patches have kind of been touched up a little bit too. I also kind of worked around with the coal loads a little bit to make them a little uh, uh, more detailed. And kind of really just touched them up because there's like a few areas that were kind of uh, uh, chipping away. You could see like some of the stone was chipping away revealing the false bottom core. So I had to touch that up. And then I re resealed the loads so that they're nice and uh, solid. They're in place, not going anywhere. So like I said, just uh, going ahead and going back and touching up a lot of this was really the main part of the project was just these cars, but they came out pretty nice. Um, so this is what, like I said, one of the two of the cars that I've been working on, kind of going back and finishing the weathering on them and adding the safety stripes. So these guys are done. Uh, like I said, I, I don't. It's not that I really have anywhere to really anything to do with these, but I just like the cars enough that I thought I could have them kind of scattered in a mixed manifest or something, uh, just for fun. So the coal hoppers, like I said, I'll, I'll go ahead and put those back in service. Now, um, I also recently purchased three of the uh, Athern Genesis um, acid tank cars, the 20,000 gallon cars, the RC, what is it, the RCR cars. I got all three of these on eBay about a month or so ago, and I basically just weathered all these up and uh, kind of gave them a light fade. Uh, gave them a, a bit of a dull finish, added the safety stripes to all three of them, and then kind of did some of the acid spillage over the side. You can see it's just kind of a, a dusty looking uh, rusty spillage on these. And I did that with some kind of some chalk pestles and powder effects. And uh, these uh, really don't corrode too badly, these banded cars, because they have these uh, anti-corrosion bands, which is the reason why they have these red bands on these cars, is to uh, deflect any kind of uh, heavy corrosion on these panels. So they put these, these basically these this red industrial coating, or even other colors. Now they put green on them, but uh, the older ones had red, and it was just a, a measure to uh, fight against corrosion. So you can see it's the corrosion that you do get on these is just basically surface spillage, and you could pretty probably uh, just take like uh, like I said um, a power washer and spray that off. So that's what I was really kind of trying to go for. And you can see all three of them are semi different between weathering, and I just trying to kind of try to weather these off with some pictures online. This one has these uh, replacement bolts on the bearing caps too, you can see. Uh, I've seen these before, you can see, especially when you see them moving down the tracks, you can see these move. I've noticed that a lot, like you'll see replacement bolts and stuff on the bearing caps, if uh, I'm correct on that. I might be wrong what those really are, but I'm pretty certain those are like replacement bolt caps, or bolts rather. So I, I try to do that, and you can see I obviously did all the weathering on these, like I said. So they're all pretty much done, and uh, they're ready to go. I'll just show you guys the uh, other sides of these real quick. Uh, really nice though. Um, I did have the original too. I had a UTCX car and I had another RCRX car, but both of those were missing the weights on the inside. So I ended up trading those with the guy. And with the money, I ended up buying these three replacements, which are brand new out of the box, which is 10 times better. So these are going to be joining my fleet, like I said. Uh, nice to have these modern tank cars though. I love buying the modern cars. So And cars like these are you gotta have these on a modern freight because these are everywhere like you said two more tank cars I also just recently purchased from a, a hobby shop Hiawatha Hobbies in Wisconsin are these Procore Acid cars and I showed these on my uh, Facebook page uh, the wiring on these already so if you guys have already seen these I'll just go over these real quick 
Um, I have two of them here, and I'll start with the least detailed one. I, I modeled these both off of photos, and you can see the first one here, I just kind of lightly faded. You can see the lettering is a little chipped up, and it's faded a little bit. And then you can see you got the uh, uh, full bar safety stripes compared to the standard safety stripe arrangement where you got the full bar and then the small bars. Uh, this one has the full vertical bars. Uh, just like the prototype. So that's pretty cool. Um, like I said, did all the kick up weathering. I really went into detail with the kick up. You can see you get the actual spray on the ends. You can see those little dots of uh, grease and grime from the rails and the trucks. That's all sprayed up on the ends there, so that makes them look really, really nice. You can see you got the acid spillage on the top. Now these ones, these don't have the um, colored bands. It's just the bare paint. So you can see these uh, get pretty well corroded. And the acid spillage drips down the side. And it just eats away at everything. So that looks pretty cool. And uh, like I said, really, like I said, went into detail with the kick up. You can see how nice that looks on the ends. Really like that. There's the other side of this one. Looks pretty good, though. And then uh, on this one, I went a little more detail, and I did some uh, repairs on the sides of the car where some of the areas were touched up, and then they primered them. They didn't actually paint them. They just painted them a gray primer and left it like that. Uh, so that looks pretty cool. And then you got the acid spillage there. Did a little stencil modification. You can see they added the new data to it. You can see that's all patched up. So that looks really, really cool. The top here on this car, too, I went into a little more detail with. You can see it's a little more patchy. It's starting to kind of... Uh, chip away a little bit the paint anyways and that looks that looks pretty cool it's, it's kind of hard to pick up with this light I have though since I don't have my actual shop light anymore uh, so it's not really picking up too well but it really looks good in real life I'll tell you what uh, so here's this side again looks pretty good I really like the kick up on these it looks really really nice especially on these ends here if I can... there you go look at that it's pretty cool huh yeah so those are my little acid cars, really, really nice. I've already put a little mileage on those, uh, running them back and forth here. Uh, so those, like I said, came out really, really cool. Now, two box cars I have to uh, finish up the rolling stock that I've been working on. Uh, I have this rail box car that I've been working on, and I'll try to get some good shots of this one. Uh, this one is ABOX 51103, an original rail box car, and uh, it's uh, obviously a rust bucket, like you can see. Either these are... Uh, covered in graffiti or these are rust buckets in real life now and you see, a lot of these even have the ghost lettering of the rail box too where the lettering is completely removed but this one's kind of in between there and it's just really more over becoming a rust bucket so you can see I added all kinds of uh, rust effects I really went into detail with it grind up the door around the uh, uh, around the railing for the door you can see it's all scratched up on these panels too and how I did these scratches is a new technique I've kind of been looking into and it's taking a piece of brass wire with a little bit of paint at the end of it and basically going and rubbing it against the side of the panel just scratching it against the side of the panel to make these lines and I think it looks pretty good and then I added all the uh, uh, hand done safety or uh, rust spots sorry not the safety stripes I did add the safety stripes to this one though you can see the primer patches for them and then they just put them on the car kind of sloppily. You even got a little repair on the door. I think that was pretty cool to do. A few hand-drawn tags here and there. Some personal tags. But uh, you can see right there it just looks really, really good. I'm really happy with it. And on the roof, pretty much the standard weathering you'll see on these cars. It's uh, pretty much full corrosion. And you get the scrapes and the uh, scratches on the roof. You can see the bare metal is revealed. Because something brushes up against these. I'm not sure what. But it has these... Uh, it basically has the bare metal at the top. And then the base or the panels themselves are completely rusted and grimed over you can see looks pretty good you know on this end you get the kick up there's some uh, rust spots and stuff like that same thing on this end and then on this side I, uh, I did add a few more hand drawn tags you can see they're chipped up and they're kind of peeling away now uh, from years of uh, grime but uh, overall I think they came out pretty good I, I did paint the, uh, pla or the wood placards on these cars that way it looks like it's a separate piece uh, because those are wood in real life something I've been doing a lot of my box cars lately uh, so that's my real box car that looks pretty good like I said that looks that'll be a joint in service whole things weathered up nicely the trucks came out really good too you can see really nice cars uh, again I apologize for the lighting it's not the best but uh, now to show you guys my car of the month here this is one I've been working on it took me about maybe six or seven hours of uh, from fading to weathering and uh, basically this is an Athens Genesis car so it has all the nice details on it and this is one of the popular uh, St. Lawrence Railroad cars 
And what I did with this one was first I took several coats of uh, white wash and dulled down the sides of the car really well. And then after I did all that, I went over with the grind coat, added the various dry brushing effects, and then went back and added all the rust spots by hand, and then did all the heavier corrosion and grime effects around the base of the car, around the railings, and the uh, uh, basically the tracks where the door you can see very heavily grimed over. You got the new car data patches, and this one's patched for EEC 2415. And uh, uh, I did this one off of some prototype photos. This isn't the exact car number, but I uh, basically did a, a, ne a representation of one here. Uh, it's not the best, I, I have to admit. I, I just kind of tried to get close. It's, it's not going to win any contest, obviously, but I just wanted to have a, a somewhat of a representation of one of these cars. Uh, if you go on some of the Facebook pages, actually, and you look at some of these fine scale modelers and they've done representations of these cars, those are cool, I'll tell you what. Uh, hopefully one of these days I can get to that skill level and uh, maybe go back and make another, but uh, I'll probably hold on to one of this guy for a while. And maybe, uh, who knows, maybe I'll sell it for a while, but it's just good to have some of these older veterans on your model railroad. Uh, to give your fleet some uh, kind of some sort of age but you can see really went to detail with the rust and corrosion added the safety stripes and all that the roof is completely much completely shut on this you can see it's just heavily corroded eaten away uh, did the patching on the ends you can see added the uh, data and all that and uh, so forth on this end too so that's pretty cool um, there's this side you can see like I said it looks really really cool you can see the panels on the side with the company logo are all are painted over as you can see it's a mismatch blue color and I think that looks really really cool but that's going to be my car of the month right there fellas uh, really really proud of it I think it looks really awesome and uh, that'll be joining my fleet uh, serving out its last days hauling uh, paper rolls so there's my uh, short lane box car like I said that's my car of the month really really proud of it and uh, that's pretty much all my rolling stock right there. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you guys some uh, local models real quick. I have uh, I showed you guys in the last video my uh, Ferex unit that I was working on. This is Ferex 3041. And I went ahead and detailed up this guy and weathered it to the prototype photos so that it looked correct. Uh, you can see you got the, uh, all the truck weathering, all the fuel tank detailing. It went all out with the detailing. All done uh, off of prototype photos. As you can see all that's done. You got the replacement K5LA on the roof all kinds of nice weathering done to this. I had to patch it obviously and change the number and uh, the hardest thing with this project and the CITX unit that I'll show you here in a second was actually uh, paint matching the green uh, to the really odd shade of green that Atherin used on these. It was kind of tricky. You can see on the end there too I added the, uh, uh, the uh, waste retention tank. You can see that's something very important. You have to add all these modern units. On the end there you got all the uh, Nice details. I added the uh, coupler bars and the ditch lights, the MU coupler, uh, the MU receptacles, the cables themselves, the uh, knuckle brackets, all that's done. There's the replacement number on the end. And then on this side, you can see really, really nice and grimy. I added the safety stripes to this as well. And it's just a, a nice old veteran of the rails. These old lease units I have. I always really like these Freerx units. These are some of my favorites. Uh, really cool looking locomotives, if you ask me. Here's the front end. The front end came out really good. There's all the uh, prototypically correct details on the front. And you can see I removed the class lights off the nose, something you got to do to all these modern units. And then basically touched up the paint, redid the chevrons, added all the details like I said. So that's Ferex 3041. I think that came out really, really cool. And that's my second Ferex unit. So this will be going along with Ferex 3031, uh, hauling freight around on my model railroad. So looks pretty cool. Uh, so that's Ferrex 3041. That's the first uh, first uh, green and silver lease unit. Now this next one is a former GCFX unit, and uh, recently GCFX sold all of their green and silver painted SD40s to uh, CITX. So CITX patched them up, and this one is 3059. This is one I've seen before, and actually in Deschler, Ohio. Now again, all prototypical weathering and detailing on this one. It's all where it should be. So I just weathered it off prototype photos. Did all the patching on it. Got the replacement number on there waste retention tank, all the appropriate fuel tank details added all kinds of nice detailing done to this, replacement fans airlines on the roof, new antennas, all kinds of stuff like that and now I want to go into the, some little de a bit of detail with the front here, the front of this locomotive, this actually used to be a high hood believe it or not and it has a strange nose on it where they actually rebuild it and they basically had a chop nose on this so you can see you got these extra grab irons and it's uh, kind of a a really interesting looking unit and also the uh, cluster on the top of the 
uh, cab right above the windows where the number boards are. It's a little bit different too than your standard S240. So I did some paint chipping effects around those gaskets too. If you can see that, that bare silver, that looks pretty good. All the appropriate details. Here's this side of the sky here. Looks pretty good. I used a micro scale sheet and a highball graphic sheet to do the numbers and the uh, patching on this locomotive. So it came out really cool. All the truck weathering is done on this guy, and I think it just looks awesome. Really, really nice. Still got to add the DC or DCC to this. Uh, so hopefully I can get around to that here in the next couple weeks. There's the end. Looks pretty good. But uh, there's uh, CITX 3059. Uh, really, really nice, really nice locomotive. Uh, another one of my favorite lease units. So again, this one is uh, going into service on my model railroad, uh, hauling some freight. So uh, hopefully I can get some videos of it running here pretty soon. But uh, yeah, there's CITX 3059. Now the last unit is one of my tunnel motors, and this is the HLCX uh, 6112. Uh, this is an older Athern RTR model. Uh, one of the patch jobs that they did. Uh, pretty rare to find now, but I actually found this one on eBay and uh, happily, uh, or luckily, won the bid on it. So basically, what I did was. Before anything else, I looked up the prototype photos, got all the appropriate information on how to model this guy. Uh, got all uh, started really kind of adding all the appropriate details, uh, taking off and finishing some of the patching. Like I said, the detailing was extremely important uh, on this locomotive. I wanted to get it right, so I went in and added all the detailing. This one actually has the uh, you can see the windshield wipers on it too, which is really nice. So that, that looks really good. I also added the reflective white sill stripe to this also. So that's completely reflected, which is really, really awesome. Uh, it'll reflect it. Uh, if you're uh, modeling like you have a lit structure, you can see the stripes reflect on these, which is always really, really cool, even with the rolling stock, like I've said. Uh, it's really cool to have those reflective striping, but I added that. Um, I darkened the grills and all that. Uh, pretty standard. And on this locomotive, you can see I did the full see-through effect on the radiator by removing the worm gear and the tower and basically making this a dummy truck. So that's the kind of one disadvantage with modeling, modeling the units like this is it's only front drive only. The, to make this uh, effect on the locomotive to be accurate, like a real tunnel motor, it ends up uh, you end up having to sacrifice the power on the trailing truck here but it's in the end it's worth it and it's kind of prototypical because I only run these units as trailing anyways as lease units since they're kind of worn out and they don't have the modern radio equipment that's all they're really good for anyways is just a a, a trailing motor so uh, did the worm gear modification I gotta say it looks really cool and then um, I added all the appropriate detailing on the back end finished the number added the new number to the back finished some of the patching added all the appropriate details and then on this side, uh, again, pretty much the same. All the details are added. Uh, really looks nice. The fuel tank's all done up really, really, really well. So I really like this unit. Um, I did do a little bit of a, I kind of finished the uh, detailing on the top here. So I added the grab irons to it. And then I added the, really the, basically the airline and kind of moved the AC unit back a little bit because it's not in the right location right out of the package. So I had to move it. Uh, just all the things that uh, you kind of require to do to this locomotive to make it prototypically correct. And all the details of this guy on the front, you can see it looks really, really nice. Again, apologize about the lighting, it's not the best. This might actually show up a little bit better if you play, if, uh, once it's played back on YouTube, but I can barely see it on my uh, camera monitor. So hopefully this shows up a little bit better quality on YouTube. Uh, you can see I, I finished the patching on the front, you can see I removed the class lights. Uh, Quite the little project. I still got to do a little sanding there to blend all that back out and finish the weather on the nose, but that's the only thing I really got to do. So, but overall, there's my least tunnel motor, and uh, I'll try to kind of stay away from more tunnel motors. Like I said, uh, having these two is already kind of pushing it because tunnel motors are pretty rare, even the least units out in modern in the modern day these days. So, uh, I know for a fact the particular unit 6112 was sold to uh, the ALL in Brazil, and now it's in Brazil, but. Uh, you know, what do you do? Uh, I still model mine like it's here in the U.S., so on my road I can, you know, model what I want and pretty much say what I want, so that's kind of nice. But uh, there's the HLCX 6112. Like I said, three more lease units. And uh, there's 3041 and CITX 3059. So there's my lease units. Those are all nice and uh, uh, pretty much complete. Still got to add the DC to all, or DCC, <laughs> sorry, to all these. Uh, that's the only thing I got to do. Um, to kind of finish up this video, some other things I'm going to be working on here soon. I got to finish this Union Pacific Dash, and you can see I already got the 
PTC on it. I got the new horn. Um, I got most of the details removed on it. So what I got to do this still is just uh, finish the detailing on it and then give it some weathering. So hopefully I can get a video of this or maybe some pictures on Facebook for you guys to see here later on. And then I'm also selling some of this rolling stock here. Like I said, I was, I was saying I was kind of eliminating some of my older rolling stock and replacing it. So all this stuff is going out the door, uh, minus this Kalen tour. I'm not selling that. I don't know why that's actually back there. But all this stuff here uh, is going up for sale. I've already got some uh, buyers for this stuff. So that will go out the door here pretty soon. Uh, so hopefully um, here coming up I can get some uh, videos of some more uh, how-to projects. So i got a few ideas that I want to kind of share with you guys. So hopefully I can get some uh, more videos rolling out the door here. But uh, this will kind of kick off this, uh, hopefully, some videos here for the next few months. Uh, it will be this little update to kind of catch you guys up to up to date what's going on in my fleet. So thanks for watching, guys. Like I said, stay tuned for more and take care as always.